Welcome back to Still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And of course, my gang is complete. If you only watch is here. Gang. Hi. Yeah, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? How are you doing? I'm blessed, I'm Okay, blessed. we missed you in the first segment. But missing was you? not too much, please. Don't, don't swell. It's okay. No, 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 no. Moving because on. I know you're being sarcastic about it, but it's fine. Let's go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the federal government has congratulated Nigerian-born Perlina Igbokwe on her recent promotion to chairman of the Universal Studio Group, a division of NBC Universal, one of the world's leading media and entertainment companies. In a statement, the Minister of Information and Culture, al Jilai Mohammed, said the federal government is very delighted at the news of the promotion, which is the latest in a string of successes that have been recorded by Igbokwe. Um, his statement read in part, quote, Igbokwe is an inspiration to millions of youth around the world and in particular those in our country's burgeoning um creative industry end of quote and also if you are well known very inspired <laughs> very 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 inspired thing just it made me so happy mm. on so many levels if you break down the wins she's won in too many ways mm -hmm. she's won as a nigerian she's won as a black That's person okay. she's won as a woman and her role is actually influential. You know, there are some titles that they give you, and it's just title. There's mm. really not that much to it. But this role can do a lot for each win that I've mentioned. You can mm. do a lot for the black community. You can do a lot for representing women better. You can do a lot for even for the Nigerian culture. I don't know how she's going to do it, but I know that her, her, her role mm. is quite huge. And, and there's it a comes lot, with a lot of responsibility There's a lot as well. to, for it. And I know she's very deserving. Like when I read the story, to be honest with you, it was the first time I kind of like noticed her that much. Mm -hmm. So when they said it was part of the many records, I was like, okay, let's go and check out what this many records mm -hmm. are. And she has done a lot. Like, I don't mind breaking everything down, printing it and putting it on my timeline. Ah, oh, about God. This, These are the um, kind of people that I want to be standing I'm and fighting you, for on social uh, media like, and writing a book about what you get. Bullshit. But yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I really This is like actually that. my ex-girlfriend's auntie. Okay. Okay. Oh. Thank Fam you very much. Fam yeah. Mahal. Imagine, ex-girlfriend, auntie. <laughs> and um, I'm very excited about it because um, knowing her, my ex always spoke about her auntie and uh, all the things she's put into place, especially while she was in America. And um, I'm actually excited about this because um, this just takes away the victim card that a lot of black people like to play. Like, oh, they don't give us a lot of reference. They don't give us a lot of this. They don't do this. Does it really take it away? Exactly. It, it doesn't completely take it in away, but I want you to know that, hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing with you. Ah. All I'm trying to let you know is that black people are succeeding in different fields of work. The ratio might be small. The percentage might be small, but a lot of us are putting in a lot of work and a lot of them are also getting a lot of reference and a lot of reverence as well okay. so i think we should just put it that look no matter what it is in life that you're into no matter what it is you do you may seem like you're the minority but if you keep putting in the work if you're consistent with what you do some way somehow somebody would recognize you and i'm really excited about this that she's actually getting this and big shout out to her i completely disagree it's all right that's I, ideology one because if you think that the tension the racial tension in in america doesn't have anything to do with her title and her and the win that she just got in there you're playing oh one. are you saying the racial Two, tension has something yes. to do with what look they just gave to the her grammys. so grammys it's not be, on merits it's no, because it's not of the racial merit. tension it, because there is oh, wow. racial tension does not mean that she's not deserving mm -hmm. there has been a lot of people that have been deserving that didn't get their feet in the in the door in america because of racial discrimination mm. now because of the racial tension we are bringing to light forcing people mm. to bend their ill standards of discrimination mm. to give us a space on the table and we're creating our own grammy just came out how many days ago to mm. to add um, to increase their, their, their quotas on women and minority groups. Mm -hmm. It's not because those women are not deserving or those uh, minority groups are not deserving, but the racial tension is having that. So for you to... I, put it I to don't you. like so the fact that you are... If I'm getting you, you're saying that there is a, an ongoing fi fight and we're winning it gradually yes. and it doesn't take away that fight. Yes. It okay. doesn't, I, I, and I'm not I, saying that he, she's not, she's not deserving, or that his so speech, she's or deserving. that his speech isn't necessarily like I put it in, to incorrect you. that black people cannot work or whatever. But you cannot completely ignore the um, glass said, ceiling the that has been placed on people, and it's not because we're lazy, and it's not because of victim mentality. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. system. That's what I, I'm trying I to correct. I put it to correct. you now that a lot of black people are being 
exploited and being exported out of Africa mm -hmm. into the Western world mm -hmm. because of their knowledge, because of their expertise, because of a lot of things. These are some things that we have tend to ignore for a long time. Now, if probably we have a working system, if probably we have a lot of things put in place for Nigeria, maybe a lot of Nigeria don't feel... Uh, you're need. actually digressing now. Yes, I'm, completely. I'm, but, but I'm not done. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, which a lot of people are beginning to ignore. So... For you to say that um, it's because of the racial tension, that is you taking away our credibility. Did you our... listen to anything we just said? Or I just said? Because Can that's I be not the done same. before you speak? Thank you very much. All right. So back to what I was saying. I'm saying that if a lot of people would actually put into consideration what a lot of black people are doing, what a lot of people, then we would not be saying that, okay, their credibility or their merit is because of the racial tension going on around the world. It's not about That's that. Not what well, she nobody said. says That's... that. That's not what she said. Can I be done? No, you are, you are, you are riding on something that is not what she Can said. I so we need be, to correct that part. That's what, not what she said. You know, I'm not saying that's what she said. Okay. I'm just saying we should Something you saw on social media because it wasn't said on this table, basically. That's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. Does but go ahead. It said on this table. Before. I thought you were addressing my conversation. Yeah. You're not addressing your okay, conversation. Okay, well, maybe you should have started with that because it looked like you, were ha you, you cut conversation. But okay, go on. Go on. So back to what I was saying, I think a lot of people should start looking at the merits of people, start looking at the works. A lot of people just say that, okay, because you're Nigerian, it's because of this. Now look at what, a, what that Nigerian has done in the past. In fact, even in our own country, there are a lot of people that get certain jobs and a lot of people feel like they're not deserving, but they don't look at it. Now I was watching one of our shows, Ways, about um, people saying that politicians are putting people into power because it's their choice and all of that. But when you look at the track record of these people that are actually in politics right now, it's actually because they've done a lot of things for their local governments. It's because they've done this, they've done that, they've done this, they've done that. Now, people don't see that. But Let me the just point you because you're going really far. Do you believe that there is something called glass ceiling in society? That away from your works and away from your mm. merits, there is a, it, some systems are, are, are built to be unequal and almost like ill, so that you can't pass a seven. But we know, level. but we know I'm that's what we. Question, but, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, okay. I'm answering your well, question. That, okay. I said, but you know that's what we face as Africans. You know that's what we face as Africans, no, 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 right? I don't but you know this started what when you said that um, this is going to take away the victim mentality, where people will just sit down and say they are not being recognized for their work. They, that was what you said. Yeah, you because a sense of entitlement that a lot of Africans. Okay. Feel. I mean, I think this if is you're about not putting in the work and you feel like you've done something, so big congratulations. No, there are a lot of people that have put in the work and still did not get what they deserve yep. but anyway well even a lot of her, white people that have put in the work and still did not get what amazing. they deserve and a lot of men too have put in the work even when women complain that they are not represented equally and yet. a lot of women have put in the no, work I'm, and a lot I'm, of men will still shut focusing. them down because of all of that well, so it is it is a balance it's a balance no, it's not balance no, it's a balance inequality that's what you're trying to say okay <laughs> oh my god okay um let's move on congratulations to um Igbokwe again and um most artists in Ghana want to win a Grammy or BET to feel relevant. And this is coming from rapper Guru. He said that every award scheme loses its credibility and eventually fades out if it does not recognize people based on their hard work. He went on to advise award organizers to make sure that they give it only to um, hardworking people in the music industry. I think um, on this note, I think this is absolutely true and it's because we feel like we need to be recognized by foreigners before we become important the moment we start looking at our own um, our words and our own recognition as very important and equally very reputable then maybe we'll start seeing differently if i feel like i can win a, a, a Sound City Music Awards, if I feel like I can win an Eddie's Award and still be a notable artist, because I don't think any Grammy Award nominee is looking at any other award. So the moment we start putting um, preference on our own person, personal awards that come to us in our own country, then we'll begin to understand the fact that it's not about international recognition. It's not about you getting known in America. It's not about you getting that publicity all over the world that makes you a very good artist in your own country. Think about the people that are listening to you, which are your... Now, there's, there's something called... Um, what's it called now? 
target audience, right? Mm. Your target audience are your fans in Nigeria. The moment you realize that your fans in Nigeria are the ones that you should even give reference to when it comes to awards, then maybe you begin to appreciate the awards that mm. come to you from Nigeria more. Because if you start thinking about being nominated for the Grammys, I'm, how many Americans know you? If we, if we go through the percentages, then we'll probably be saying like 5% Americans know you, 95% Nigerians yeah. know you. I like you. that you use yeah. the word reputable because mm. that's what I'm concerned about. When people don't necessarily appreciate awards that happen here, um, sometimes you look at why they don't want to and if you look at the track record, you begin to see that those that have even gotten the award can be said not to have been deserving on their, of the award based on what happened in the year in question, yeah? I mean, when it comes to movies in Nigeria, we I think we've grown to that point where we have reputable movie awards, and that's because they have worked over the years. They've gone through the point where we felt like they were not reputable and mm. understood that they need to hold a standard. And, um, I mean, we can gladly call the AMVCA. We can like gladly call... And um, what's this other one that happens as well? I need to remember the name. Um, the last time it happened in Ghana and all. So we have that for movies, but do we have that for music? Can we really sit back and say this award is African, is Nigerian, and they are really sincere about it and doesn't feel like somebody paid to get this award and all that? So I mm. think that they also need to work on their um, uh, on them being reputable for people to begin to accept them. And this is not to say that that mindset of anything foreign is sweet. Mm. I mean, we have it, and it can be very irritating, mm. even in the way that our media would um, um, yeah. report things yeah. that happen to a Nigerian or what a Nigerian has done mm. and. Um, now base that on what an, a foreigner has done and how they report it. Mm. You see the massive difference. And that was why I was really upset when it was, I think, when it was the lockdown, when Kemen started his own whole fitness thing, staying at home. Nobody was paying attention in the Nigerian media space until we called him to the show. But you saw, I, I don't want to mention his name now, a foreign actor, he put off his white shirt and was working out every day at home and showing clips. And it was news. They were reporting it as one of the biggest deal. So we also need to begin to uh, appreciate ourselves as much as the reputation needs to be upheld that's how i feel but about i think it. this mm -hmm. has become very general as well because you see a lot of people coming against them um, now nah, let's go let's leave music now and go into the music scene a lot of people see the oscars as um, a white wash award and um, where it is um, the white supremacists that are giving out the awards and all that so i think this is very very common with every industry and every country where you look at it like okay because it is this person giving the award is not reputable because these people are racist it's not reputable so i think it's a structure that needs to be worked on globally and it's not just in nigeria i like that you mentioned target audience in your thing because um the first thing for me was like sometimes some people's sounds are just um they've made it so biteable globally that they will get the global recognition and that's not wow. always a bad thing mm. i think if i'm making art if i'm making any type of expressive um, um uh, performance or whatever I, me personally, I would want to get global recognition if that is my target audience, like you mentioned. There is nothing wrong with wanting to stay local, but I don't think there's anything wrong with also wanting to um, appeal to other audiences. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of guests on the show when we ask them, like, you know, um, what's your target? What, who, who do you want to listen to your sound? And they say everyone globally. So some, I don't think that's a bad thing. But then I cannot deny the fact like that you've mentioned, you've also mentioned, that there is the uh, new colonization mentality is still perpetrating in our mm. minds where white is right and if they get if we get an applause from the master then we've done well mm -hmm. there is that mindset of course but it, it, it's hard to speak for people you know you don't really know the mindset behind the person's need to want to get that recognition like someone like, like Bernard Boy for me as much as I don't like his way of speaking sometimes I feel like he's giving me enough reason to believe that he is indeed Afrocentric and doesn't really want the um the you know the white man's applause but grammys was still a big deal mm -hmm. and and that's not, that's not a problem for me that, yeah. so that's that for me was a good balance okay um very quickly before we go chica ek finally reacts to um remote relationship with regina daniel's billionaire husband ned woko now this drama set over the weekend when a video of um regina daniel's mom surfaced online where she was telling um Chika Ike to stay away from her daughter's husband and now she's responding saying no I'm not I'm not that's not to dating um, Ned Woko she says I'm not about to be anybody's seventh wife never 
Hmm. This story, I, I've tried to stay very quiet from it because, you know, a lot of the times rumors have a way of, you know, perpetrating faster, faster than facts. It's just nicer to have whatever. And the truth of the matter is, I don't, I'm, I'm not in Chica's room. I don't see her with, you know, Nedwoko having conversations or whatever. So no one can really speak on that matter. Just about conversations? Her. <clears throat> <I'm sorry. laughs> so no one can speak on that matter about her. I like that she came out though to mention that she would never be the seventh wife. That's, period. That's the important part of so this conversation. So if she said that, then <laughs> that's it. Whatever she wants to do with any me, other part of that conversation mm -hmm. is not relevant. I, I I don't like the the commentators that I've seen on on social media, and I like that people are having kind of like a balanced conversation with this. Usually, they're always attacking the side chick mm. and they're always bashing and i was expecting a lot of bashing but it seems to people to be like uh, what's the problem because no, you are um, you saying you don't understand why it is a what's the problem issue no i no i'm saying that i can explain it to you yeah, why it's like that why? because in their head yeah the man in question has six wives already mm -hmm. so they have given him the room and the opportunity and the authority to have so even 20. Uh -huh. so if there is a side chick they don't care and they are not worried about the chi side chick because yeah. they're saying if a regina daniels can do oh, it the same then thing. you can do it it doesn't mean that we have changed our mentality if this was a man with just one wife of course. she will be dragged from twitter to facebook to instagram course, so that's what course. i want to make clear right, now yeah right. okay I amazing thoughts on not wanting to be a seventh wife but are you having an affair with a married man oh. that's a big question we mm. need to ask because we know that that is what happens in the society today we've seen a lot of married men die in relationships with a lot of girls mm. even though they are married to six seven eight nine ten wives wow. mm -hmm. but they still have other relationships and outside but, but Regina Chica, had hold a relationship on. with him before they got married you. no problem with that but they got married what? right oh. it became wow. legal right wow it became wow. legal right but chica ak is now saying that i'm not going to get married so i'm not, not, I'm not him, about to, to be him. so no that's 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 not exactly what i'm saying now what i'm saying is that um, I think um, we're losing the focus here. Okay, Before focus. Rita Daniels came out to say a whole lot of this mm -hmm. now, I, be I want to believe that that's an inside gist yes. coming from Rita at herself, mm -hmm. right? Something involving a daughter, a very young daughter, which she's very protective about. <laughs> she and gave her to an old man. She was so protective. She gave her to a man that has six before. You know, that's, 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 that's a terrible going. mentality for you oh, to wow. even think that giving a young girl to an old man, she didn't give a young girl. Now, that's the mentality we need to get out of <laughs> our head. You don't give, I wish had you don't time. give a child to anyone. That point has it been is taken. the child's decision whether she wants to be with a man or not whether mm. he's 92 and she decides that she wants oh, yeah, to be she's with protective what now happens? so she's very protective of it so check her Ike has not denied having a relationship she with said it she said no i'm not i'm not going to be a seventh she wife. said no i'm not she said, no, i am I'm not, not going to be yeah, she a seventh wife. Do you know i'm not is to well, the at the end of the question. day the gist is that she has been dating and like we i mentioned no one's is sweeter than facts if it's okay, we, need, said, we need to go i wish you had more time because this said. would have been a very interesting conversation but thank you for watching and please do send your opinions via whatsapp to 090-6057-19 or tweet at us at plus tv africa also catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our youtube channel at plus tv africa you can also watch tea time on auto tv and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchor Sife Omai and Ife Oluwashoke and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. To stay safe.